So, can you please introduce yourself? Uh, so, I mean. Yes, definitely. So, the first, uh, the guest of honor should introduce themselves. So, please go on. Okay. Uh, so, um, myself, uh, Professor K. Jayashankar. So, I'm currently uh, the founder, uh, principal director of the International Institute of Justice and Police Sciences at Bengaluru, Karnataka. So, I have over 30 years of experience in the field of criminal and criminal justice, and uh, I'm uh, ranked the 16th among the top influential criminal justice in the world. Uh, and uh, our focus of our institute is more into applied activities related to criminal and criminal justice and victimology where we are tending to work as a think tank, creating awareness and uh, trying to some programs, uh, certificate programs and uh, uh, diploma programs, uh, which are applied in nature and help people who are already in the system, like uh, trying to develop the field of criminology in India, uh, which is uh, not that developed compared to the Western nations. So we are, we are doing uh, uh, work for the past one year and we have could have reached a lot of people. And we do a lot of uh, victim counseling also. In fact, we have started a center for cyber <coughs> victim counseling in 2009, and we have counseled more than 5,000 victims there. So we tend to work uh, integrating uh, principles of psychology and uh, criminology, sociology, and law, and uh, provide uh, solution based approaches. So not necessarily only from a one perspective, that is psychology. Uh, we tend to work from multiple angles so that solutions can be derived from various angles because crime is a very complex phenomenon. Okay. Okay. That's thank you for that, sir. So my name is Bareta Singh and I'm a counseling psychologist here at the Mindweather. And today we are gonna talk about something very uh, topic that you have yourself proposed, the impact of PTSD on crime victim. So firstly let's begin with in your expertise. Uh, I honestly don't know how much uh, about uh, PTSD you taught in your criminology, but I would like to know your of your expertise about it. So, firstly, can you describe what what is PTSD? What are the typical symptoms, and how does it impact their daily lives? See, one point is that who undergoes this PTSD? So, when you derive this word post-traumatic stress disorder, so it's a trauma-based stress disorder. So, not everyone uh, become a victim of PTSD. Only a specific group of people, they become victim of PTSD. So as I already pointed, they have experience in handling victims for a long time of more than 15 to 20 years. We have seen people suffering from PTSD. In fact, anyone can be a victim of PTSD, not necessarily that yes. uh, you need to uh, stigmatize people. Uh, I am vulnerable, you are vulnerable for PTSD based on a traumatic event. So any event that passes by, it can be an accident, it can be an incident. In terms of crime, uh, it's not a kind of a uh, thing that everybody wants to be a victim of crime, but somewhere or another we are victim of crime for two reasons. One on personal reason, another on a structural reason. So on a personal reason, we may become a victim of a crime at any point of time due to robbery or any, any sexual assault or others. But in a structural way, uh, as being a gender as a woman or being a child or an old person or even a person who belongs to a vulnerable community, uh, they are structurally, they may be victimized and they may undergo PTSD. So in terms of PTSD, whenever we undergo a traumatic event, uh, whether it's a car crash, whether it is a crime even, uh, it can be starting from acute chronic. So when you say acute, a short term incident like a robbery or a dapati where weapons are used. So people may undergo post traumatic stress disorder in terms of uh, intrusive memories, like people keep on replaying that like a tape recorder again and again that one they will be and uh, uh, they will be playing uh, negative emotions for a longer time so they will not be positive even if you infuse positively they will continue to be uh, negative only and also avoidance behavior will be higher so they will be avoiding situations and people also uh, who belong to the particular uh, thing and uh, they carry on uh, this and also uh, the hyper arousal will be there so they will be irritated, they will be more uh, unstable and they will become anger, uh, angry for no reason also. And uh, right. these are people with uh, sleep disturbances, uh, insomnia will be there. And of course it affects more the mental and uh, physical health. In terms of mental health, I have pointed all these things. In terms of physical health, I would like to point like where uh, we are affected in terms of uh, uh, lack of hunger, anorexia, mm -hmm. and uh, then 
it affects the gastrointestinal thing because you know the fear component first attacks the guts and uh, uh, gut disorder will happen so that's what they call it second brain so of course uh, ptsd has the first brain attack but then guts uh, it affects the stomach then once the stomach attack happens then it disrupts the biochemical reaction in the body so it stops all the uh, happiness chemicals in us dopamine serotonin uh, oxytocin and dopamine and, and uh, because of the clogging of the pores then people tend to become more uh, negative and they tend not tend to come out of that also in spite of other things so uh, there are two types of solutions we tend to make it one is therapeutic in fact i have developed a field called the therapeutic criminology in 2023 mm. where we are looking at therapy from a um, perspective away from clinical so not necessarily that all, all therapy needs to be within a clinical mm -hmm. setup but in a non-clinical setup yeah. so we can uh, make so that is what my therapeutic criminology uh, suggests to involve uh, music therapy to involve uh, dance therapy to involve uh, trucking as a solution so these are some of the basic things but uh, however i can proceed based on your further questions okay and so uh, the, the one who has faced a crime and ha now has developed PTSD for it. How is how is impact? How do how are they impacted? Because they have to participate in the legal proceedings of that crime as well. Like they have to be witnesses or give testimony. So, how does their PTSD impact all of this? See, one of the key element of uh, the crime victimization is uh, that it connects with law because so any crime is defined by law so without uh, anything uh, on law there is nothing as a crime so so you need to pass on uh, the criminal justice process to get justice so every victim aim for a justice that is the punishment for the victim or compensation so they have to go through the corridors of the criminal justice system which is very longer first they have to go to the police In the police they have to take it to the charge sheet level and then it goes to the court and then they have to attend the defense and then uh, uh, answer the questions of the defense lawyer and then finally uh, judiciary will take a call on but, but this is a long term process of even some and this must be very triggering also for yeah, someone yeah. with ptsd so so normally the ptsd is there and we call it uh, um, what do you call uh, um, secondary uh, trauma that uh, it happens second yes, yes. Happens in this process so the primary right. intimidation already have happened so when a person goes to the court the question asked by the defense lawyer will be even more excruciating and painful than compared to the original incident itself because yeah. it is like uh, attacking their uh, conscience and asking question and making them feel like they are trying to tell a lie so no one wants to tell a lie but the system will try to make uh, that they are um, um, try, trying to tell a lie so that they can the defense can break the case and the perpetrator can come out so loss of memory is one of the thing because he is maybe forgetful also because it's a long time it, it has happened and in terms of legal part financial part is an important component where the lawyers uh, tend to ask more money uh, to settle the case so uh, the victim has to shell out from his or her own pocket and that becomes another issue and when uh, they go to the police also the many times police are insensitive to the needs of the victim yes so they may treat them in a suspicious way or a bad way and that will create problem in their psyche because already they are in a uh, very bad uh, disorder their psyche is not good but further um, this will enhance the uh, their activity that they will be prone to become more violent uh, because the system is not helping, society is not helping, and individuals are not helping. And coping uh, many times not necessarily be rational coping because our mind is not rational. When you are in PTSD, it doesn't work rationally. So retaliation or taking revenge taking behavior also is a part of PTSD. People may tend to do that. So that way uh, you would see that uh, going within the policing system is also one of the uh, thing. But other thing is that non-judicial uh, retaliation also may be taken by a victim also, which is a little bit dangerous right. in another way. Mm. So yeah. it's, a, it's a very long path to justice. And that that is a yeah. thing. Yeah, and it's not very serving to those who suffer from all this because of a crime. Okay, uh, so uh, I can see again. Sir, one point is that uh, labeling is a point. The labeling is a point. The moment you want to be labeled as a victim, so getting the label as a victim itself is a very tough thing because people do not uh, recognize that immediately. As I told you, 
that the first step is uh, 154 CRPC to make an FIR. Itself is a very tough thing. So many times police do not file an FIR. Mm. So we have to give pressure from the higher ups, and then only sometimes uh, FIR will make. Mm. After FIR, also it has to move to another level where uh, they have to get um, the charge sheet filed, and that will only right. take it to the next level. And also, you see one other point in legal proceedings. I would say is that mm. for the victim, the state only is the lawyer. That means the victim takes the responsibility of the victimization. So state appoints the defense counsel uh, from their side called as public prosecutor. And this public pro prosecutor is a government person. So uh -huh. they not necessarily will empathize with the victim because the victim does not belong to the government and victim is a private individual. So many a times there is no collaboration between uh, the public prosecutor and the victim. Uh, so we uh, cannot uh, inform correctly what the feeling they are undergoing and that cannot be translated by yes. the public prosecutor because they are only representing the victim. Okay, so sir, so, um, when a person, what do you, since you are in this field an expert, we can call, so so what do you think are some certain elements which influence one to engage in criminal activities? See, that is a very, very complex uh, uh, thing. Uh, like uh, uh, you uh, must have come across criminal. certain cases where there were common criminal. backgrounds, so common uh, themes. One, one point is that like uh, people always, uh, when you see a movie, people will think like it is because of poverty, it is because of the other thing. So there are very complex things like starting from genetics. Right, exactly. Like genetics play a role because our genes are being carried from one generation to another. But genetics alone does not play a big role. We have Definitely. another thing with terms of sociology. So where in what kind of social environment one is uh, being brought up. So if there is a broken neighborhood, where there is a broken family, and this can be contributing to the vulnerability of becoming a criminal, and also where the uh, person uh, is uh, there. For example, uh, uh, Professor Sutherland says that crime is a learned behavior like any other thing. So we need not give glorify it, nor we need to undermine it, but uh, it's a normal behavior. It tends to um, happen because of the social pressure and the peer influence. Mm. So the media has a role, the society has a role, and the socialization process that happens in the school, colleges, and the university has a very big role in terms of how a person is perceived to. And also the uh, consequences of bullying, physical or cyber, has an impact that whether they want to become an offender or not. Because these are the people who will uh, tend to become an offender to retaliate against the society in a different way. That's why serial killers emerge. And uh, as I pointed out, sometimes the structural uh, aspect of uh, uh, society mm -hmm. itself uh, makes people criminalized. So some people are vulnerable to criminalization. They become criminals because they do not want to, but they become criminal because the system makes them do so. So, and also some other uh, people commit crime because they want to increase their identity. They want to show heroic things so that they can violate people. And basically human beings are uh, violators of any rules. If you see a child, always the child would tend to violate the uh, commands of the parents. And uh, uh, that's how we grow also. Many times we grow Definitely. breaking the rules of the family only. We do not grow uh, by not breaking. If, so suppose we are not breaking the rules of the family, we are never growing. So also says that uh, the day that uh, man <coughs> uh, ignores the father, while the father is, that is the day he or she is matured. So that way we naturally we tend to violate law. But the kind of a law which is available is from this trivia to the bigger one. A society may make a trivial thing. Uh, for example, you are wearing a chashma. This this chashma is not a correct chashma. A square chashma should be there. So this is a very trivial thing. Even that rules may be posed by some uh, group of family members or others. But even other thing like uh, coming late in the night and everything, we have social stigma and social norms. But ultimately, law is something which is very bigger because law is sanctioned by the state. Whereas norms is sanctioned by the society, which is unwritten. So when the laws are sanctioned by the state, then law comes with a machinery of law enforcement, the policing, where you will be arrested according to the Indian Penal Code mm -hmm. and laws. And that way around, you, you will find that um, we have become victim of a particular rules and regulation, typically because existing laws are there. And also, laws are, the laws are not uh, 
same. So, for example, uh, adultery was a crime uh, before some time. Now it is decriminalized. Uh, that doesn't mean it is legalized. But there are civil remedies, so it has become civil, uh, civil wrong, mm -hmm. not. Uh, uh, and also homosexuality was earlier a crime, but now it is not a crime. So crime is a dynamic uh, phenomena. So in some society, crime may be even accepted as an uh, kind of an act of valor, and some uh, it may be accepted, not accepted like that. So the reason Palestine, Israel, you can see there is a kind of a moral stance where we want to stand with Israel or we want to stand with uh, Palestine. So the, there are two moral stands people take according to what. Uh, and they they want to whether they want to take a stand with the victim and who is victim according to them they take a stand on like that so that that is how uh, you can see you are away from the legal principles you can see crime more from a moral angle also. definitely yes sir so so uh, talking of the victor and offender dynamic um, is there any does the victim consciously or uh, does the offender consciously or unconsciously choose a victim or is it just at the wrong place at the right time thing, wrong time thing? See, there are two things. Things one is opportunity based victimization, other is not opportunity based but a system based victimization. When it comes to opportunity based system, suppose I'm opening the car and keeping my purse, and somebody can easily steal that, so I'm giving an opportunity. Suppose I'm opening my window and keeping my money there, so I'm giving an opportunity. So this is not a planned one. It's an unstructural one. So. Most of the times it happens in, in this way when it comes to property based uh, crime, but interpersonal crimes are not like that. Targets are selected and they are becoming uh, vulnerable. For example, like uh, uh, the victimization against SST, SCST in the country where certain people uh, fire their houses, targeted. And uh, even uh, during the Hindu Muslim rights, a particular building belonging to a Hindu or a Muslim is targeted and they are fired, uh, then that becomes more structural oriented victimization. So many times victim and offender dynamics is such a way that sometimes victim uh, know the person, sometimes victim do not know the person. So it depends on the type of crime where victims do uh, have a relationship. So in terms of the domestic violence, you know that most of the time the uh, victim knows the uh, perpetrator, the husband or the family uh, members so it's a very mm. intricate uh, relationship and that uh, that makes them more vulnerable compared to the people who are having a non opportunity an opportunity one where they may undergo a series of victimization in their family itself but they cannot share outside because of the fact they are happening within their family system itself for example a mm. continuous child sexual abuse over a period of time within the family the chain may not open up in the uh, society, but the perpetrator may be very close. Even many of the Paxo cases in India, the researchers found that the close relatives are the one who makes the children more vulnerable for sexual victimization. And uh, same goes to other other case. And in terms of stalking, uh, where uh, one person stalks the other, it may not be the victim may not know the offender sometimes. It can either happen mm -hmm. online or it can happen offline also. So, yes. uh, victim and offender dynamic is a phenomenon which needs to do a lot of research on that because it's emerging now. Um, because of the thing, uh, the terms like uh, victim precipitation has come, uh, which the victim also contributes to the crime, which is highly uh, people are uh, mm. criticizing that particular time, how uh, one person can contribute to their own victimization. Because yeah. uh, you see, like if I'm opening my wallet and keeping it in front of an open door or a window, then I am contributing to the my own victimization, self-victimization. But I am not able to acknowledge that because I am having that info that I will not accept that idea that I can contribute mm. to my own time. So we need to tend to do that. But alternative uh, word also that will come is victim blaming also. So society is blaming many people that why you were in the wrong time, as you pointed the question, wrong time, wrong place. So what is wrong time and wrong place uh, depends on your individual factors also. For example, as a man, if I am at a bar at 12 o'clock, uh, uh, that is a right place for me, but it may be a wrong place for you as a female gender. Okay, as a child also, as an old man also, as an old person also. But again, it doesn't mean that at 12 o'clock at a bar in a remote place, I am not vulnerable. I am also vulnerable. But the society and other factors does not decide that way around. It provides some kind of security yes. to me where I can I cannot be a victim. But uh, suppose I drink a lot and then I involve in a brawl and then three people attack me, I may become a victim. 
So the chance I of victim, victim, I think, uh, victim is not only related to a particular uh, structural thing, but also vulnerability in a particular uh, space, geographical space, and time plays an important role. So in developing PTSD, are there, uh, like we have talked about the risk factors of someone engaging in a criminal activity. Now let's talk about the risk factors of someone developing a PTSD. Not everyone, who, like you said, not everyone who experiences a crime, witnesses a criminal activity, develops PTSD. So what are some risk factors you think predispose someone to developing PTSD? See, one, one point is that uh, even uh, there are a lot, lot, large number of people working in the police force and uh, uh, in also army but all they, they are seeing blood every day okay they are seeing their bodies every day. but all of them are not developing the ptsd only few people are vulnerable because you see the empathy quotient matters a lot so some people have higher level of empathy they become more vulnerable for ptsd so that that comes naturally you see uh, not everyone are having the same level of empathy some people yeah. have so more more the empathy because what happens is that we put ourselves in the other person's shoes so that that may takes a secondary trauma so that way even when we are affected on that particular thing we become more uh, emotionally vulnerable right. and uh, uh, i call it is an as an emotional abyss not an abuse but emotional abyss so we are falling we have a free fall we do not know that where to stop so that is why ptsd uh, is uh, curable for some people and it, you know, it takes a longer time for some people that they can carry yeah. on for uh, even generations for example and it can develop a lot of comorbidities comorbidities also yeah and, and see victimhood is traveling uh, for a longer time jews are victims uh, in holocaust in uh, uh, the germany in, under, under hitler but still now they are carrying the victimhood they, are, they, 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 they they their problems are not solved they are having a uh, in, inner in, in a conflict within their country mm. and also outside. And the same yes, to the yes. Dalits, Dalits of India, that uh, their discrimination, yes, all the yes. period of time still uh, reservation has happened, still many things have happened, but people carry on the victimhood. So why? Yes. That's what the problem you can see that the installation of one software prolongs for a long time and it includes victimization. That, uh, that's a larger software which we do not want because sometimes uh, victimization software is installed in our uh, brain mm. by somebody else because they can right. get for a definition. Yeah. The victim mindset is a very real thing. I yeah. agree with you. Yes. So, so um, lastly, I want to ask you something, a question I've always wanted to ask the person of your expertise. If someone steals a bed because they are starving or if someone steals a medication because they can't afford it and they will die without it it is illegal but does that make it a, make them a criminal see one point is that uh, there are a uh, lot of stances here whether it is a legal stance whether it's a moral stance uh, in terms of legal stand it is a, a crime because stealing some other property a person's property without their uh, knowledge taking something without the knowledge as a crime as per the uh, section 379 of the I ipc that it de defines uh, theft, okay so but when it comes to moral stance they are stealing for their basic needs they are not stealing to become a, a rich person they are stealing only for the basic needs uh, for a uh, hunger or something like that so in terms of moral stand we can take a different stand where uh, they can be pardoned or forgiven. So that is taken care in the laws where you will see that uh, less sentences are given for uh, people who are acting for the first time, stealing something for the sake of hunger, first time. They may be released on probation, they may be released uh, quickly. Uh, even judge can be lenient, give them some kind of a social work to do. So those kind of thing uh, you are seeing and I think you would have watched some uh, kind of a program of uh, uh, one judge Caprio in uh, US, where the judge gives lenient sentences in terms of uh, a car uh, violations mm. in traffic. So right. That is very popular. Yeah, that is very popular in US. So where the judge uh, sometimes measures the uh, what do you call the person's background, whether they are a single mom, whether they are having a problem in their family, and accordingly mm. punishment is being uh, given. So you can see that you cannot measure everything in a same yardstick. That's why. Uh, judiciary has human beings are not robots okay so, so we can we can be very clear that tomorrow artificial intelligence can take over many things but not things like judiciary teachers police where uh, they need to utilize their 
uh, emotions and that's where emotion plays a big role when it comes to take a decision on uh, what is meant by a punishment so uh, jeremy bentham says that the punishment should fit the crime but how fitting decides uh, on the circumstances okay so who is stealing on what level they are stealing and what are they are the child or the grown up or the old people so are the women or the men all these things matters a lot when you take a judicial stand i don't think such cases are even like proceeded further in legal legally right like uh, not necessarily in terms like okay for example even uh, indian penal code provides uh, uh, for a private defense also where uh, right. the person can sue the other uh, for the sake when uh, somebody can, is seen to be raped or murdered Uh, but uh, at the same time, like it, it uh, not necessarily need to go to the judiciary level, even police level that can be pardoned and let off also. So simply in Tamil Nadu, a superintendent of police has let off a, a woman who committed a killing because she saw that uh, her daughter is being violated and she killed a man. And uh, that um, uh, woman was let uh, out of the uh, proceedings by a superintendent of police based on the. Indian penal code. So, not necessarily it needs to go to the judiciary and do that. So, you can see that the custodian of justice, uh, basically the doorkeepers of justice are police only. So, they can let loose itself. So, they need not make an FIR. They need not make a charge. Hmm. So, a lot of things are there until it reaches the judiciary. So, the ball rolling from uh, police to judiciary itself is a long thing. So, police have a lot of powers to pardon also in terms of like commissioner of police in the city has more judicial powers also. So, they can do that. Okay. Thank you, sir, for your time. I am so glad to have talked to you, an expert like you. Thank you so much for this talk. And uh, we will, because we will be posting it everywhere. And if there are any comments pertaining to this, like a question of inquiry, do answer. Okay. And thank you so much again, sir. Thank you. Thank you. So, So, so this is uh, being recorded and it will be available for the yes sir, it, this has been this has gone live and recorded and now we will post it and there there are often people with doubts and questions so make sure you give them a piece of your wisdom okay thank you thank you uh, thank, thank you sir thank nice you great talk uh, have a great day bye bye you too sir